Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Hawa, and I am a low-income student. Colleges ought to invest in low-income students because every poor person deserves to feel rich. Here, we have a list of some of our country's top colleges and universities. It is no secret that these institutions are the nation's leaders in terms of research, most renowned faculty, and strictest select college selectivity standards. However, in terms of socioeconomic diversity, all of these schools are in last place. They are Stanford's, MIT, Yale. Though they may be number one in the amount of Rhodes Scholars and Nobel Prize winners, America's top colleges are losers. In the words of Amy Poehler, you ain't better than me, Harvard. <laughs> in a study done of the nation's top 125 most competitive colleges, it was seen that less than 5% of the students are of the lowest income quartile. Our high, our high income peers are at these schools at rates over 70%. Now, some people may say this makes sense. Low income students aren't as intelligent or as motivated as our high income peers. However, in a study done comparing eighth grade test scores to college completion, it was shown that a high achieving low income student is just as likely to complete college as a low achieving high income student. The rate at which high income students are graduating college is rising exponentially. However, low income students, that number remains stagnant. Low income students typically return to the low wage labor jobs that their parents knew. Clearly, there is a problem. Now, growing up, I didn't have much hope for attending college. In fact, I just kind of assumed I wasn't going. To make up for this, I watched YouTube videos of famous people giving college commencement addresses because I figured if I couldn't be an intellectual, I could at least learn from those who were deemed great. I was there when Desmond Tutu put his hands up and told Chapel Hill graduates to go on dreaming and seek compassion. Randy Pausch told Carnegie Mellon students that you can't tell people what to do or what to think, you can only tell them stories. And I was there when Steve Jobs told Stanford's class of 2005 that if you wake up every day saying, I am going to live today as if it were my last day, one day you will be right. <laughs> now my story started in Chad, the country in which I was born. And I find that when I tell people I'm from Chad, I get one of three responses. Most people know that it's in Africa. There are those who ask me, you know, where, where is that exactly? I did have one classmate in high school. When I told her I was from Chad, she asked me, who's Chad? <laughs> well, there's Chad. My story began in 1993. I was born in a refugee camp because my great uncle was the former president of Chad. And after a coup d'etat, my family went from a life of power to one of squander. In 1997, we arrived in the United States with nothing but the clothes on our backs. I grew up living a life of food stamps and donated clothes. My mother, a 15-year-old bride, did not complete school past eighth grade. For me, college was nothing but a far-fetched fantasy. However, upon receiving a full scholarship to study at the University of Virginia, go Hoos, <laughs> my whole world changed. And now I had a lifetime of unforeseeable opportunity. Now, as a politics major, a lot of my time is spent discussing wealth and poverty and different definitions for the two. And though rather relative, I define poverty as simply not being able to live to your fullest potential. Every day, I wake up in my room, type on my laptop, and eat three meals, all of which have been provided for me by the university. And though I may live below the poverty line, for the first time in my life, I have everything I need. College made me rich. This past summer, I got to bike across the United States, a 4,265-mile journey from Charleston, South Carolina, to Santa Cruz, California. And what was more amazing to me than waking up every day at 5 a.m. and biking up mountains and through deserts was that this trip was to raise money and awareness for poverty-stricken Americans. We built houses along the way with Habitat for Humanity affiliates. 
Now, I grew up in a shoddy apartment where mice and roaches were once my roommates. All I've ever wanted was a house. But biking across the country allowed me to give houses to other people and reflect on just how privileged I am. And one day, we reached the Pacific Ocean. And while my teammates and I were talking about how astounding it, that it was that we got here on our bikes, I was amazed because I got to look to my teammates and say, I am wealthy. I've never known what that world, word means, but for the first time in my life, I'm wealthy. My name is Hawa, and I'm a low-income student. Colleges ought to invest in me, and students just like me, because every poor person deserves to feel rich. Thank you.